The crystal pickup will happen soon. We should start heading over. You're probably right. Leanna nods. Once they complete the exchange, we should follow the guy to see if he leads us to their hideout. He might have other partners, so we should be on guard. We're co we could be falling into a trap. We certainly don't want that. I still can't think of why they'd want these crystals. Doesn't make any sense. You're absolutely right. Energy crystals have varying utilizations, some of which are outlawed. There's also that option. Kara seems a bit surprised, but Leanna doesn't react to that. Thinking about what these outlawed utilizations could be makes me uneasy. We have our plan. Let's get started. Oh, hi, buddy. How you feeling this morning, this evening, day, whatever time of day it is right now? How you feeling? I'm feeling great, champ. We trace back to the ruins and find the abandoned house with the children. Instead of entering, we spread out around the perimeter to maximize visibility on anyone approaching. Kara and I stay close to the house and hide behind some fallen bricks. Our field of vision is limited, but we're close enough to overhear any conversations that take place inside. Strategic placement. After we position ourselves, we wait. It's a stakeout. We don't know when the man's going to show up, and after about 20 minutes, I start to get fidgety. I wish the kids had given us a time. Who knows how long we'll be stuck out here for? My legs are starting to cramp, but as I shift, Kara shoots me a warning glance, and I force myself to push through it. Sorry. Finally, a man approaches. He looks to be in his 20s and, surprisingly, wears something that resembles a beanie on his head. Kara yanks my collar, so we duck down. She covers my mouth with her hand and puts a finger to her lips. Looks like our job is to listen in. The others will be our eyes. I hear a door creak, followed by the faint sound of footsteps. Hey, yo, you punks got my crystals or what? Wow. That guy looks methed out of his mind. He looks a little methed up. I listen for any extra footsteps, but it sounds like the man came solo. Here. There is a rustling of a bag being opened. What is this? These crystals are weak, yo. That's all we could find. Ah, uh, nah, this ain't good, man. Sorry. The boy's voice is weak. Huh. The bag closes, and the man grunts as he lifts it up. Wait, where are our coins? You'll get your payment when you deliver, yo. This is only half of what you promised. This dude's a scumbag. There's a silence. I carefully peek out to see the boy straining with his hands clenched. Fine. That's what I thought. The stranger lugs the bag over his shoulder. I quickly duck back down as he exits the house. I hope he didn't see me. Time to go. I turn to face Kara, who wears a serious frown and has fury in her eyes. I don't think I've ever seen her angry before, let alone this angry. She looks like she's about to rip that guy's head off. Uh-oh. Uh, Kara? Did you not see that? We should take him out now. I did see that, and it's not my fault. Think about the bigger picture. Don't be stupid. Hey, don't be stupid. Think about the bigger picture here. He could just be a messenger. We have to stick to the plan. Kara clenches and unclenches her jaw. Then she nods, still fuming. I know you're right, but still. He'll get his justice soon enough. Let's hurry up and go. Yeah. We trail the man out of Stonecrest making sure to stay behind buildings and keep to the shadows so as not to be spotted. Kara slips in and out of the alleys with ease, 
and it takes a lot of my concentration not to lose her, and I'm the one following her. No wonder she's always sneaking up on us. I assume the rest of our team is also following him as I'm unable to spot them. That's for the best. The less chance of being noticed, the better. Outside of the city gates, it's a little harder to stay hidden as it opens out into a more open field. At least, since we're spread out, it won't be easy for him to escape if he tries to. We successfully follow him to what looks like an abandoned train car. This looks oddly familiar. There's some kind of dark smoke emanating from the top, or emitting from the top. The man pauses, and we crouch lower behind cover as he looks around. He doesn't spot any of us, and enters the train. Kara again puts her finger to her lips and I nod. Staying low, we sneak towards the train. The windows are all blocked off, but we crouch below them anyway. I can hear muffled voices as I gently press my ear against the train. Yo, Mr. White! Jesse, how many times do I have to tell you to call me Heisenberg? That... This is great. A Breaking Bad reference, this is fantastic. The man speaks softly, but his tone is strict and disapproving. My bad, but I got some crystals. Let's see. There are many, and they're pretty small. I don't think we'd be able to get much out of them anyway. It doesn't matter their size. Once we're done cooking them, they'll be exponentially more effective. What are they cooking? Are they making lamp crystal soup or something like that? I don't know, man. They're tiny. How does that even work? It's a simple matter of science. Ah, yes. Science. You serious? You can do something like that? Indeed. Yeah, Mr. White. Yeah, science. Heisenberg. Oh, right. My bad, yo. I hear faint clanging of glassware. I wish I could see what they're doing. A sharp snap cracks somewhere from behind me. What was that? I shift out of position to look behind me and see an animal scampering away. As I breathe a sigh of relief, I notice the absence of noise in the train. Uh-oh, maybe they're spooked too. What was that? Before I have a chance to get down, one of the windows swing open, and I am face to face with both of them. Hi, guys. Don't mind me. I'm just an illusion. Whatever you're doing, I'm not real. Just, just close the door. Close the window. I'm not here. Go about your business, as you were. The younger man with a beanie, Jesse, stares at me with wild eyes. The second man is much older, maybe at the age of his father, and fixes me with an inscrutable stare. He looks surprisingly normal, not like someone who'd get mixed up with something shady. Jesse turns around and darts out of the back exit. Run! Mr. White joins him as Carr and I sprint to the other side of the train. Thankfully, Leanna and Zack are already there, our muscles waiting. Leanna points her blade at them. Surrender and come with us peacefully. Jesse looks like he's about to bolt, but Zack fixes his discharger on them. I wouldn't move if I were you. Crap, what do we do? <laughs> I don't like that laugh. Why are you laughing at a time like this? Amelia stands a good distance away, her manipulators glowing. After looking over at the older man, she frowns. The brandy no void. I'm sorry, the what now? Quite the observation, young miss. Wait, what? You're a part of Void? 
Mr. White merely smiles. I didn't sign up for this. Don't be so naive. You think the crystals were just going to magically create more energy? Your intent was to perform shadow transmutation on the crystals to create tainted spheres. Again, he doesn't answer. It appears confrontation is imminent. Why don't we even up the odds? How? I'm going to regret asking that question, aren't I? With a flash, Mr. White grabs two shadowy spheres from his belt, similar to the one I saw in Raven Pass. He throws them to the ground and a dark smog emits, curling in the air. Liana reacts first and blasts her wind magic to dissipate the smoke. In its place are two shadow creatures. Their warped appendages are nothing that I recognize, and their long shadow claws come into a sharp point. This is the stuff of nightmares. They stand between us and Mr. White, with Jesse cowering beside him. Shadow familiars! This is getting way too crazy for me. I'm out. Jesse breaks into a sprint and Kara immediately gives chase. I've got him. The two of them dash out of sight. Unfortunately, you've disrupted my work, which means I have to start all over again. So I'm going to get going. Where do you think you're going? You're not getting away from me. He channels a spell and starts to run. As he continues to chant the spell, shadows crawl up his legs, threatening to engulf him completely in shadow. We can't let him get away! Leanna looks from the man to the familiars. As much as I want to go after him, our top priority is to defeat these shadow creatures. Indeed. Shadow familiars this close in proximity to a city can wreak havoc and incite widespread panic. Not no. Not no. They would know better than I, and I trust their instincts. I look back at Heisenberg being swallowed by shadow. Once the shadows fade away, he disappears. It's combat time. Zack readies his dischargers. A small smile on his face. Sounds like a challenge. My heart races as I draw my blade. This is getting crazy. Oh, mini game time. Okay. Shadow monstrosity. Click the icons in the displayed order. Okay. Uh, so boom, boom. Okay. I get how this is. Shield, axe, shield, daggers. Then shield, shield, axe, shield. And axe, shield, shield, daggers. I win. That's a fun one. I'm never really sure how these mini games are ever going to work. And they've all been different each time, which has been really cool. As Lana, Zack, and I wear down the shadow familiars, Emilia stays out of range, charging her attacks. The magic attacks that she lets loose are far more powerful than ours as they rip chunks out of the shadow creatures. The long range carry. Now I'm, I understand why everyone's so impressed when they talk about mage casters. The hostile shadow familiars have been vanquished. Well, that was easy. I mean, yes, that was easy. I won the minigame after all. It should have been the easiest thing possible, yes. That's exactly how that works. Leanna's magical glow and the charge of her blade fade as she stops channeling her magic. We did it! You don't look so excited. I smile as I try to catch my breath. Looking around, Leanna, Zack, and Amelia look equally exhausted. They must have gone all out. This battle was no walk in the park, and there were only two Shadow Familiars to fight. Imagine if we had to face an army of them. I shiver at the thought. As we wind down, 
Amelia and Leanna gather to do one last scan with their manipulators. Zack looks over my way. Looks like some of that training is finally paying off. Hey, bite me, asshole. I won the drinking contest. You have no right to talk. Thank you. I'm still mad at you for shooting me that time. I hope to get even stronger. Okay, I'm going with my kind of sense of humor of just giving him a hard time. I'm still mad at you for shooting me that time. It helps when a certain jackass doesn't shoot me during a melee spar. Zack snickers, then shrugs. Hey! An appropriate reaction from him. I'm glad I picked it. We turn at the sound of Kara's voice. She waves at us with one hand as she uses the other to drag Jesse back. She plops him down in front of us and he falls ungracefully to the ground. I see that his hands are bound. Kara stands over him, her face grim. Now, you're going to tell us exactly what you know. I don't know Jack Squad. Mr. White was paying me to get crystals and that's it, yo! So you were not an accomplice to the shadow transmutation. I don't even know what the shadow transportation is. Transmutation, stupid. Transmutation. Thank you, waifu. See, we're on the same wavelength. Exactly! We glare at him. Look, I made a few deliveries to him. The first couple of times he wouldn't tell me what he did, but paid some good coin. But later he said he was going to show me so I could help with his operations. He was going to give solid pay for that too, yo. I look him up and down. He stares desperately at us, and it's clear to me he's scared. This doesn't seem like the kind of man Void would trust with any kind of responsibilities, let alone most men with any responsibilities. I'm inclined to believe he's just looking for some fast cash. Kara seems skeptical, but Amelia and Leanna seem to have come to the same conclusion I have. Zack crosses his arms, just mad he didn't get a chance to shoot them. Better hope the guards believe your story. Jesse looks like he's about to protest, but sighs instead. I think he realizes there's no chance he's going to escape. The bag of stolen crystals is in there. He didn't grab it before running out. Leanna enters the train and returns with a bulging bag. Let's go turn him into the guards. They'll take it from here. Zack hauls Jesse back to his feet and leads him back towards town. Luckily, it's late at night, so very few people walk the street. The few who do give us long stares as we pass them. Why are you guys walking with a man with his hands bound? Either this is some kinky thing, or you're just weird. When we arrive at the guard barracks, the person on duty gets to his feet. He looks at Leanna in recognition. Oh, it's you again. We found the source of your missing crystals. Zack pushes Jesse forward and he stumbles into the guard, who grabs a hold of him. The guard eyes him up and down. It's this guy? Oh man, it was all cause of Void! The guard stares at him, clearly unconvinced. Uh-huh. Maybe in lockup you'll have time to think up a better story. I'm telling you the truth, bitch! The guard frowns and passes Jesse off to another guard who takes him into the back. Then the guard turns back to us. Hopefully you won't have any more issues. The guard grins and looks relieved. I can't thank you all enough. You have no idea how much of a thorn in my side this has all been. As promised, there's a reward for helping us catch the culprit. Oh, there is now. That'll work for us. He produces a heavy satchel of gold, which he hands over to us. Thanks again for all your help, and I hope you have a safe night. Thanks. We leave the guardhouse and equally divvy up the reward money. As everything settles down, the group decides to return to the inn, because 
It's been a long night. It's time for bed. I'm glad we got to the bottom of things, but I can't help but wonder, what will happen to those kids? There's nothing I can do or share my reward with them. Well, sure, I don't know all too much about these kids and their background and everything since Zack and I were drinking. Best use of our time there. So, I mean, the least I can do, because it sounds like they really helped us out and that, and Jesse was being quite a jerk to them earlier, I'm going to share my reward with them just because I'm a complete stranger to them, essentially, doing them a favor. I'll meet you guys at the end. I think I forgot something. I slip away before anyone can ask me any questions and make my way back to those kids. They were dependent on that crystal money to survive and I can't sit by and do nothing to help them. I gotta be a good Samaritan. I know I don't have much to offer, but maybe giving them a cut of my reward can help tide them over. Quietly, I enter the house so as not to spook the children, so they'll be spooked when they notice there's a stranger in their house. As I near the trap door, I hear Kara's voice. How did she get here so fast? And what is she doing here? Slowing my steps, I silently creep towards the trap door and spy on Kara and the kids. Here you go, guys. Take this. She hands the oldest boy a fat coin purse. We must have had the same idea about sharing our reward money. The boy silently accepts it, too shocked by the amount of money to even speak. The man won't be coming for crystals anymore, so use that to help you find a new way to survive. The boy nods numbly. Some of the younger children huddle together, clearly frightened for their futures. Kara smiles reassuringly. I know it seems scary, but I promise if you stick together, you'll be fine. The kids hug each other. Duh. I won't let anything happen to anyone. Good. I know you won't. Take care of yourselves, okay? And stay out of trouble. Kara turns to leave, and I scramble out of sight. She doesn't notice me as she hurries away. It seems like she's got a soft spot for these kids. I better do what I came here to do and get back before people get too suspicious. Hey, kids! I go down into the trap room. The oldest boy looks up at me in surprise. Here! I toss him a small bag of my coins, which he fumbles before catching. He looks genuinely surprised, as if he can't believe it's happening. But why? If it weren't for you, we wouldn't have caught the bad guys. You kids were a big help. Really? He looks at the other children, who give him hopeful eyes. Then he grins. Thank you. I nod. I should be getting back. Once I return to the upstairs, I hear the children scramble below and a series of excited gasps as they inspect the reward money. Wow, the girl gave us so much! I've never seen so much money before in my life! The boy still gave a lot, though. More than we got from crystals. Whoa. Just how much money did Kara give? Was it her whole reward? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Did she give the whole reward? Just about the whole reward? Or more than? Maybe she dipped from her own pocket to help these kids out. Let me know what you think. For a treasure hunter, that seems very generous. Maybe there's more to it. I wonder what it could be as I return to the inn and meet up with the rest of the group. As I enter the inn, Liana looks around. 
Where's Kara? Kara's not back yet? But she left before me. I don't know. I thought she was following everyone back. I thought so too. Leanna bites her lip and furrows her brows. I'm sure she'll be back soon. Though if I remember right, her contact should be back tonight. I wonder if she stopped to see him about going to the next temple. While we wait for Kara to return, we decide to grab something to eat. With all of the excitement going on, we forgot about dinner. We get our orders and settle in. Zack and Leanna dig in. Amelia, on the other hand, is quiet as she stares at her plate. Is she okay? Amelia? She looks up at me. Yes? Something wrong? She shakes her head. No. I was pondering about the lab at the Void Hideout, which was used to perform shadow transmutations. What exactly is that? I'll pass on the exposition. No, what, what exactly is that? I've been meaning to ask, what is this shadow transmutation you were talking about earlier? It is the process in which shadow energy is merged with a crystal containing another form of elemental energy. This fusion causes an overwhelming surge of energy to spawn which consequently destabilizes the crystal and causes the shadow energy to become uncontrollable and very dangerous. This is what we refer to as a tainted sphere, like the one the treasurer used in Raven Pass, and what was used to summon the shadow familiars. It didn't seem uncontrollable when they used it, though. Perhaps not those times. However, as it is disabled sphere, the energy is unpredictable. It's possible it will cast properly, but equally possible it will implode upon itself at any time, which would be fatal to the mage in possession of it. Sounds like it may be a 50-50 shot. That's a best case scenario. Imagine if one of those crystals went off and spawned a shadow familiar in the middle of town. I don't want to think about that, though. Because that would definitely be bad. That's why shadow transmutation has been outlawed, even before the Treaty of Asaria. I thought you said all use of shadow magic was banned. Yes, but there were legitimate users of shadow magic before the war. And like that, you lost me. Shadow magic is not innately harmful. It was originally used in non-destructive ways, just like any other element. That being said, a group of practitioners abused the usage of shadow magic, which revealed just how dangerous it can be when used in such a manner. That is what caused the eventual war on Assyria and the subsequent banning of shadow magic. Gotcha. And that group was void? Correct. Things are starting to make a little more sense. But I'm not sure I understand it all. It's just a little troublesome to think that there was someone performing shadow transmutation just on the outskirts of Stonecrest. And with a lot of crystals, too. Even though Void was defeated, it wasn't completely wiped out. And their remaining members have just been laying low. Emilia and Leanna nod. The conversation lulls as we think about what was said. We finish the rest of our food in silence, just having to think about all that. By the time we finish up our meals, Car returns. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. I met up with my contact and he came through. Called it! He said that there's some adventurer who's been talking about one of those high concentrations of energy. He's at Hearth Point right now, but probably won't be staying for too long. We should head there in the morning and see what he knows. What's the guy's name? Arton Hunt. Zack shrugs. 
I guess he doesn't know him. It might sound like just a rumor, but there's always a grain of truth in a rumor. At the very least, we should be able to get a clue or two. Do some investigative work ourselves. Leanna nods. Okay, tomorrow we'll head for Hearth Point. Emilia nods. I yawn widely. Uh... Tonight, though, I'm ready for bed. The team murmurs their agreement, and we all turn in early. Been an exciting day. It's been a long day, and that fight really took it out of me. After getting ready, I climb into bed and immediately fall into a deep sleep. Well needed after a long day and a hard day of fighting. The next morning, I wake up with a wide yawn. Oh, my body aches from the fight, but otherwise, I feel well rested. I gather my things and meet the group downstairs for a quick breakfast. Then, we begin our journey to Hearth Point, and we're going to continue our journey to Hearth Point next time. We're going to end the episode here. As always, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button down below or leaving a comment. It really does help me out. Also, feel free to follow me on twi uh, Twitter and Instagram, just slash Siloclone. Be more than happy to talk with you guys on there and see what I'm up to and get daily uploads as to uh, daily notifications as to what I'm up to and kind of what I'm doing and when a new video goes live as well. And as always, I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the force be with you and have a great rest of your day. Take care.